Hi guys and welcome back to Is It Worth It Reviews. I'm Srbolyub Stojanovic and today we are talking about X-Duo TA20+. Plus. Now this is a headphone amplifier and it's that. It's not a DAC and an amp but a separate standalone headphone amplifier. It's also a hybrid tube and class A buffer amp. And uh, that's an interesting solution because it lets you use much wider range of headphone impedances. For example, X-Duo's own TA26 and 26S were OTLs amps, just tube amps that uh, cannot handle low impedance headphones, only high impedance ones. This one can handle everything from the lowest impedances to the highest ones. Uh, because of this class A buffer. But uh, the tube section should give you that distinct tube sound that many of us like. And here you can see three tubes are being used. The smaller ones are 12AU7 or also known as ECC88 here in Europe. Those are for the signal itself and we are using two of them because this is a fully balanced amplifier. Uh, the big one is a tube rectifier. So there should be quite a bit of that tube magic in the sound here, but more on that a little bit later. Now in the back, as you can see, we have single-ended and balanced uh, analog inputs. There's also one set of single-ended analog outs, and in the front we see three different headphone outputs, once again, there are single-ended and balanced ones. And the thing that I guess will be a favorite amongst many buyers is the real analog VU meter. And it lights uh, nice orange uh, as well as tubes and it, it just looks gorgeous while working. I like it. It's a gimmick of course, but it's a pretty great gimmick. And the power of this amp is very respectable. I think it goes up to 2 watts and I'll put that on the screen. Uh, so what else is left to say? Oh yeah, if you want to do that you can roll tubes, meaning that you can uh, unplug these default ones, you just pull them out and you can put in any aftermarket 12AU7 tube that you want that will change the tonality and the sound. But uh, today I will be focusing on the sound of the default tubes that uh, come with the unit. And when you get it like that, how does this amp sound? But in a few days I will be talking about uh, how does it sound with upgraded 12AU7 ray tubes from APOS. I decided to put that in a separate video so I do not overwhelm you with different comparisons and everything in this one. It would be too long in my opinion. But uh, as I said, today we are talking about how does it sound out of the box. One last thing, you have a metal cage to protect those tubes that we like so much. It snaps in and you don't have to use this cage if you like uh, looking at your tubes, but if you have pets or maybe small kids, it's quite useful to, to prevent them from touching hot tubes, to hurt themselves or hurt your precious tubes. But all of that aside, let's talk sound now. TA20 plus uh, first thing that you notice when you connect it and you start listening is that it definitely has that tube sound. And the thing that I connect to that tube sound the most is how fluid everything sounds. Now I know that many reviewers call, uh, use word coherent. And uh, that's basically uh, when we are talking about time domain how things are connected with each other, how smoothly and how continuously. But uh, I, I often use these words like fluid, liquid, continuous, because I'm a simple man, 
but it's important that we get each other, that we understand each other. And uh, TA20 Plus sounds very fluid. It's uh, so smooth and so liquid-like sound that there is no doubt it's a tube amp. You cannot get that kind of sound from a solid-state amplifier. At least, I apologize, at least I haven't heard one sounding like that. Now, when it comes to the tonality, uh, let's start from the bass line. It's very full, it's just uh, warm and full-bodied. It's not tight, it's not grippy, it's not textured. If you're after that, it's not that kind of amp. Instead, as I said, it's very full, it's quite warm, it's very pleasant to listen to. But the interesting thing is that we move up the frequency spectrum. I uh, think that it does not color the sound too much. There is a decent amount of warmth in the mid bass and lower mid range, and it gives a pleasant fullness to everything. But once uh, we come to upper mid range, there is quite a bit of presence and sparkliness in that region. And because of that, this amp doesn't sound dark or tame at all. However, even in the mid-range, that great uh, coherence and that great fluidity is still there. So even if that upper mid-range is emphasized a little bit, it still sounds very fluid and it's never harsh. I couldn't call it sharp. It's just a bit emphasized and gives sparkle and spice to the sound. And things like strings sound very lifelike when listened through this amp. And very similar story applies to highs, like the highest spectrum. Highs are well extended, but they do not bring that sort of uh, grainy air into the sound. Instead, everything feels like glowing, you know, once again like a continuous well-connected glow. I can definitely say the tubes are doing their magic and they're making everything sound more fluid and more pleasant than uh, it would without them. And then when it comes to the sound staging, it's what you would expect of an average amp uh, at this price, roughly. It's decently spacious, it's not cluttered, it separates instruments quite well, but it doesn't have some sort of award-winning width and depth and huge amount of space around your head, at least with these factory-supplied tubes. But what I can praise definitely is dynamics. Dynamics is good. This amp sounds punchy, it sounds alive. That bass line that I mentioned, that's warm and full, and just really nice and palpable, it has good punch, it has good kick, and uh, it's the same for the mid-range and highs. As I explained, there is a little bit of sparkle there, and when something sudden happens in a track, like a very sudden string pluck or cymbal crush, that sounds very alive and very engaging with this amp. But the real test about how something actually sounds is when you compare it to other devices. And for that, I started by using Topping L70. This is uh, a bit more affordable at 350, I believe the price is. And when I compared them directly, I was surprised that they shared most of the tonality. So starting with the bass line, that's also full and warm on L70. And that goes for the mid bass, for the mid range, there's that warmth adding like nice listenable character to the sound of both of these amps. But once we get to slightly higher frequencies, and that starts with upper mid-range, that I said sounds very lively and spicy with TA20+, that's where L70 starts to sound more retracted and a little bit dull even. 
so strings do not sound as alive with L70. Highs do not extend and do not last in time as long as they do with TA20+. And that glow, high frequency glow, that's never harsh, but it's there, it's giving you like a feeling of really open and extended highs, is again a little bit closer and tamer and just a little bit more dull sounding with L70. Aside from that, they have similar sound staging, slightly bigger because of, of those better extended highs on TA20+, plus, but similar, dynamics are similar, and just overall detail retrieval is similar. But uh, that upper mid-range and highs being more lively sounding on TA20+, plus gives something to the music that makes me enjoy it more. And also there is that fluidity, that time coherence, that liquidity to the sound that's simply better with tube amp, even though L70 is one of the warmer and smoother sounding uh, solid state amps, it's still not a match for a real tube amp. So it's not a huge difference really, but TA20 Plus does sound livelier and uh, nicer in my opinion. Now another comparison that I made is with topping A90 Discrete. And uh, this one is uh, one of those amps that sounds very revealing, very grippy on the bass line. The bass is tight, it has good energy, but it's tight. It's not warm and it also has great texture, but you could call it lean if you want to. And uh, that also goes for the rest of the sound, mid-range very revealing. There's a lot of uh, small fine details, really quick transients, clean edges, quite good inner tone detailing, inner tone texture, and good high frequency extension. There's lots of air. But when you compare them directly, uh, A90D definitely sounds tonally more neutral. It's just flat. It's uh, baseline, mid-range, highs, everything feels like the, it falls in a flat line. But when you compare them directly, once again, that liquidity and fluidity of sound of TA20 Plus kicks in. And you uh, notice that uh, tones just glide, like on a very nicely polished ice. On the other hand, with topping, they're still gliding quite okay, but its ice is a rougher surface. Nobody polished it. It's a, it's a little bit matte. Is that the word? I thought it's mate, but somebody told me it's matte. Tones sound a little bit rougher. I don't know if you would like that or not. Uh, even in the highs, there is that sensation of more grain like the, the tone overall is a bit more grainy and raspy and less noticeably less liquid than it is on TA20+. Plus. But on the other hand, uh, topping definitely retrieves more details. The TA20 Plus cannot uh, show you all of, of that uh, tone texture, especially in the baseline, and actually in the mid-range and highs too. Technically speaking, I would have to give win to topping. But what would you like more? I would actually bet that majority, when uh, given these two to just listen and asked which one they enjoyed more, which one would, would they keep to just listen to the music, I think that majority would choose TA20+. I think that many people are ready to sacrifice some technical excellence for something that they consider to be easygoing and very natural sounding and musical. Yeah, I used musical, sue me. The thing that you also have to remember is that TA20 Plus has rollable tubes. 
and uh, that would change the stance between this amp and other amps I compared it to in this review. But as I said, that would be too many comparisons, too much things to talk about, and I've decided to put that into a separate video. So uh, what can I say for today's review? T820 Plus is a very good amplifier. It has all of the qualities that you would expect from a tube amp, but it has uh, none of the sacrifices that a pure OTL tube amp like T826 has, meaning that you only have to use higher impedance headphones. I do not have T826 with me anymore. I sold it because of that, exactly. Because I cannot use most of my favorite headphones, which are planners, like Gold Planner GL2000s and VRM ones and even AKG K702, which are 60 ohms. None of that goes well with OTL tube amps. But this one has all of the smooth and liquid qualities of T826. It's even more resolving in my opinion, it's even more dynamic and lively sounding, and it works with much wider range of impedances. And that, in my book, makes it a great amp. And that's especially true if you like aftermarket tuning and tube rolling. But more on that soon. Until then, I hope you like this video and see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.